Sermon title, Walking in Morality in a Seemingly Immoral Society by Pastor Kevin Quailchild Rodriguez.
what a great, strong, rich worship. Amen. Why don't we take about 30 seconds and uh, why don't you greet somebody you haven't greeted in a minute? Amen. good to you. Can we give him a great hand clap of praise? Um, let everyone who has breath praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, church, we had uh, a lot going on. We, um, we had uh, uh, not too much time to really prepare for things today, but God is just speaking in, in so many different ways, amen. We're gonna get into some of that here today. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get right started, amen. Um, we've got the youth, so youth, if I could have you to please stand. Hallelujah. We're gonna go ahead and pray and dismiss teacher and youth. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Another chance for the children to really draw close to you. I pray that in their short project or whatever they do today, Lord, you just open up their heart and um, just cause them to draw close to you, oh Lord, with all humility and, and genuineness. Lord, we pray a, a double portion anointing upon the teacher as well, that as she release the project or whatever scripture that they talk about today, that your Holy Spirit would make it plain and simple for the hearts of the children here today, Lord. We pray that this um, youth service today would be an everlasting blessing for the youth and the teacher. We pray this in Jesus' mighty matchless name. Amen, amen. Youth, teacher, you are dismissed. And church, I felt led today as I was doing things and keep doing my best to keep my mind on Jesus and praying and meditating. What kept coming to me was in this season, there's a lot of dreams going on. And uh, sometimes dreams have a very prophetic uh, 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 message for us. So I encourage us that uh, we pay attention to the dreams. I, my wife is having so many. My brother out in New Mexico is having so many, and uh, they just keep flooding, getting calls from other people, from other, um, you know, church organizations. And uh, we just had our, our first um, prophetic voice panel meeting this week and uh, the elders and the folks that were contributing you know to this discussion um, dreams and they're connected they're they're coming from a lot of different uh, directions but what they all have something similar they are they're urgent they're they're they're, they're really projecting a, a sense of urgency right an urgency, um, warning, and to, to be prepared and ready, right? So <clears throat> I just want to encourage us. We spent the last two um, services really talking about the season that we're in, right? 
you all know the season that we're in, right? Because we all heard in depth together scripturally, prophetically, and how all these things are lining up, right? So knowing that, right, that knowledge helps to guide us, you know, so it's fitting that today as we talk about, you know, the, ser the sermon that, or the title that the Lord has placed in my heart, that, that we've had this understanding realized and now we can really focus on the things that matter, preserve the things that matter to us, our families and our communities that we serve, etc. Amen. So I just wanted to encourage us, though, dreams, dreams, dreams. Do not take them for granted. Amen. And uh, if you need help ever with dreams, um, I, I'm always available. Amen. So if you feel like there's something that's coming through, um, I just encourage us. But hey, even like my disciple in Texas, you know, who wrote a piece in the book, um, I could tell that God was dealing with him, Bertina, like prophetically. And there was a time that I was praying and going to get the interpretation of his dream and the Holy Spirit said, now it's time for him to learn to interpret his own dream, right? So I got to witness God starting to deal with that soul. And now, you know, he was on the panel with us this week too, James in Texas, right? But now we're seeing how God raised him up and now his prophetic dreams are now beyond his own family and into the realm of the body of Christ where it's now much bigger right it's because it's for the whole community to edify and build up the community amen so uh, but I encourage you pay attention to your dreams uh, like my wife she's already starting to write them down too because there's so many of them that are coming in <laughs> amen Hallelujah. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started here today and uh, for, for today's message. Uh, if you would, we're going to go ahead and, and lead in with uh, some scripture that has been placed on my heart. We were in it just this morning, but uh, it is fitting for today's message. <clears throat> Amen. Real quick, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. See, I don't got my notes, so here I am. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let us pray for the word. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for gathering your children here today. Father, open up our heart and uh, teal the soil of our heart that, Lord, when the seeds of life are deposited here today, it would go on good, fertile soil in our hearts to take deep root and manifest much fruit out of our obedience to you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, and we pray that today's word is an everlasting blessing for all of us. We know that we're in these end times, but Lord, you have a way of encouraging us in the midst of much darkness. And we just thank you for that. We can sleep uh, with much peace and, and rest, Lord, even in the midst of great darkness. And we thank you because the spirit of peace comes from your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for that. But here today, Lord, nothing that manifests we glory in the flesh, but we deflect all the praise, all the honor, all the glory goes to you in the kingdom of heaven in spirit, by faith, and in truth. And we pray this, Lord. Holy Spirit, take full control in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. Isaiah 60, we're just gonna read um, the first few uh, sentences here from, let's just, let's start off with verses one through three. Book of Isaiah chapter 60, verses one through three. And the word of the Lord reads, arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. The title of the message today that was placed on my heart uh, for the last several days now is uh, walking morally, walking morally in a seemingly immoral society. Walking morally in a seemingly un or immoral society. Amen. Isaiah, certainly in this scripture, in 
in uh, Isaiah 60 was prophetically even speaking of the coming of the Christ, right? That, that the glory of God uh, was going to come, and even as Enoch prophesied um, that, that the Messiah would come to dwell upon the earth with the peoples. You know, as I mentioned earlier, we talked about, you know, abomination causing desolation and how this setup is, is the season of the earth now. Our, our Hopi people call it uh, the season of purification. Um, but, but in the midst of, of great darkness, Isaiah was foretelling of the Christ and the peace and the comfort that was going to come through his glory when he comes to the earth. And um, here we see the details of great darknesses upon the earth and great darknesses upon the peoples, right? Let's not make any mistake here. It's talking about much wickedness on the earth in our eyes. We're seeing in every direction, we're seeing darkness, right? But it's saying what? Arise and shine. And it's saying to arise and shine in the midst of great darkness, right? And, and see, you know, I've got to see many of you over the last couple of years and seeing the growth. And, and I thank God because this investment, right, it's, it, it, it's an investment to the kingdom of God, right? We ought not to... Um, take that lightly or for granted that we've seen many miracles within our families, right? Can't make this stuff up. But, but it's we're doing our part in the midst of great darkness. We're shining our own individual light, right? As you, I have to do the same thing. I have to walk out my individual walk of salvation. <laughs> I can't walk it out for anybody else, right? With fear and trembling. Fear and trembling, meaning my reverence, my love, my respect to God Almighty, right? But also in his love, right? Let's not, let's really not get too focused on like fear in a scary way, you know? And, and don't get me wrong, there are times that I've come behind the pulpit and I'm quite trembling at my knees in fear. But his, my reverence for him brings about a peace that in the midst of great trembling that I have, I'm at peace because I know that he's guiding me. He doesn't want me to misrepresent. He doesn't want me to teach something that I have no business trying to teach, but, but, but that I feel the presence of his authority, his, his, his holiness, and I'm doing everything in reverence and respect to him to bring forth the message that he wants me to bring. So there is that element, but, it, but I want us to realize that when, when you have a, a, a father, right, when you have a dad who you love and you respect, how much more for Abba Father in the kingdom of heaven that we would show him this diligence and respect and reverence for him, right? So, so that's our portion, that in the midst of great darkness, we have, you know, the light that shines from within us and it radiates out to a hurting world. Amen. Amen. And uh, so, you know, as I begin to reflect on this season, you know, and uh, as God would have me to, to, to really say, you know, um, it's your responsibility, it's your duty to, to walk this faith out, right? To, to be moral. I don't think we hear that word enough anymore. You know, if, if Enoch used those words even to, to, to influence a society, I think that we need to start using those words as well. I mean, to be morals, to have a good character, right? To, to have a character that shows that... that, that uh, you're, you're not going to do anything unjustly, right? And, and in everything God does, he does it fairly, but he's no respecter of person, which means, uh, Suzette, just because, you know, you may think one way about yourself and I may think that, that, no, he doesn't care that you're rich, he doesn't care if you're poor, he's no respecter of those classes, right? That he judges 
and he, he fairly, uh, uh, you know, when he has to rebuke, when he has to bring correction, he's bringing it from a place of fairness, impartial to class, political status, all these things. They don't mean nothing to him because he's trying to get at our heart, right? So that's what matters. Is that our heart be inclined to him and that, that the standards that he establishes through his word, those standards would be the standards that we do in every bit in our life. We, we calibrate to those standards because we by now, after two years, having been getting immersed in the word and being consistent and showing our diligence that, hey, Lord, we're not forsaken. We're not in the habit of forsaking your, your, your assembly, but we're here together and we're investing, right? And, as, and, and that's the crazy thing about the assembly of God, a true assembly of God that, that really reverences God, right? Supernatural things start to happen even in worship, right? Because we are contributing one unto another, right? And that's one thing that really had to deal with me when I was newly saved and newly walking out my walk with God and newly reading the Word of God. As he started to have me to realize that, that, that this church encounter, if you're not there, somebody may have missed or you may have missed the potential of something to take place there were times that maybe I could have ministered to somebody, but because I decided not to go, you know, you see what I'm getting at, right? It's bigger than the message. It's bigger than all those things because when we contribute, we're contributing to an altar set by God as we bring ourselves as living sacrifices. He don't want dead animals no more. He doesn't want those things. He, he wants us to come <laughs> and assemble, Right? So we've been, we've been witnessing this and, and the strength of God, right? The strength of God has, has been increasing in our lives, helping us to protect our families. The urgency, right, Suzette? There's urgency to, to, to pray over my home, to anoint it with oil in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is bringing this understanding and urgency. Uh, you can't look to one to another and say, oh, well, you know, this is, you know, because of me. No, 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 no. The invisible realm of God and the spirit is moving to bring great revelation from this side, from this side, to that side, to this side, and bringing it together so that not one of us can point to us and try to get glory. But like the glory of God here, we would look up to where the glory comes from and say, Lord from heaven, <laughs> you're really doing a good work, right? So, so this morality, right, in the midst of society where there's a demoralization of mankind. Total, I mean, almost in so many ways, you, you can see that uh, uh, human life is just being taken for granted over and over, right? Just, just th this, this new generation is coming up and, 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 you know, I was just telling my wife as we were driving, he's, it's crazy that, that in an instant you could spark a, 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 an aggressive reaction from somebody because it's almost like the atmosphere is charged with this anger. And yet, though, and yet... In the midst of the charge of the atmosphere, that, that from one word, you could invoke a fight right then and there, right? Throw down and just somebody's getting hurt or both getting hurt. I mean, that's how charged the atmosphere is, right? And yet, that can be diffused by just words of love, you know? Inside, I'm saying... Brother, I see you dogging me over there. Hey, brother, how are you? How's, how's your day going? God bless you. And it's just, you know, but if I would have been like, who are you trying to dog us at? Right? We know what that would invoke, right? 
but 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 it's so nobody's going to want to turn the cheek. Or, but but God has given us the standard. He's given us the word of God to help to understand that. Yeah, I, I know it's this way. I know it's. But I have a chance to speak life, and, and, and it's amazing how just a handshake, or a smile, to take someone who would want to just tear your head off, but then they show you love because you, that's what you brought. You, you showed love, and then they reciprocated love. You know, So I want to encourage us that, that even though, we, as Isaiah was talking here, you know, great darkness is upon the land and great thick darkness is upon the people. You know, we have now an obligation, right? Because if we love God, there's no other translation that on this earth, in this physical sense, that we love one another, right? And so I just want to encourage us that as, as we understand the season, as we understand the signs, right? That, that we can help the world be a better place in the areas that we have influence in, right? We have great influence. And so it's on us to show our kids, our grandkids, what morality means. These words mean something in just general society to be moral, to be just, to, to, to not have favoritism. You know, even, you know, Apostle Paul addresses favoritism in a very mighty, mighty way. Never, never show favoritism, you know? Um, and that's a hard one because growing up, you, you, you learned that. That was normal, right? But, but in, the, in, a, in a, a world that is seemingly more immoral than moral, we have a duty, we have an obligation to, to teach our children what morality is. To be, to be a steward of treating people nice, treat your neighbor as you would want to be treated, right? These, these golden rules, right? Because if there's any chance, you know, that we get to reach our children to help sort of, you know, God, he's saying progression is going to take place. It's already been pronounced, <laughs> Right? But his word, he shows that when we help to influence people to do the right thing, that he says, I'll always hear from heaven because he says, you know, if my people would humble themselves and pray, right? Our ancestors did this. They modeled this because they knew where their help, we should know where our help comes from. We got the word of God saying that if you need something, you're going to ask for it in prayer, you know you need it, he knows you need it already, but he wants us to humble ourselves and ask for it. But if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray unto me, will I not hear from heaven and heal your land? He's always willing to relent, always willing to allow good to perpetuate, right? So even in this time of great immorality we have all these great promises of God that we shall not forget encourage ourselves with these things demonstrate that moral um, act of kindness the moral being responsible if I make a commitment to Arturo Arturo makes a commitment to me we stand by those commitments because now the character of God rests on us. And if God's, one of God's greatest characters is everything that he speaks, he's faithful to bring it to pass. We got to allow that character to rest on us, right? Even in the ministry, as we've extended our tent posts, even in Navajo Nation, you know, our, our ordained ministers, they know you make a, a, a commitment to a poor man, you better meet that commitment. You make it to a rich man, you meet that commitment. But whether you, they are that poor man, homeless person, or that ministry that has thousands upon thousands of followers, you make your commitment to them, you keep it. Because that's just the way God wants 
and expects us to be. And that is moral. And the Holy Spirit is our moral compass. Right? What do we mean by that? If you're acting a fool or you, you allow your, and we're all guilty of this, right? But this is speaking of, uh, of a response, a response, how we can recover in our bad behavior. We all have it sometimes. The Lord knows I do. I slip up, right? But I have a moral compass that if I'm listening to him, he's going to be faithful to bring it to my remembrance. Don't act like that. Don't act a fool. Don't say what you're about to say after that. Because then you're going to really regret it, right? That's the Holy Spirit who is there to be our moral guidance, our moral compass, our moral GPS. If I could put some new day language or lingo to it, right? GPS, we hear that. Or compass, we hear that. But he helps to guide us. So I, I really encourage us, church, that in this time, it, great challenges, certainly, you know, um, great challenges because, you know, the enemy in every way wants to do what? Kill, steal, destroy. And if he can get us to be, uh, take our focus off of God, which as, a, as, as we're focusing on God, as we're focusing on the things that please him, and we want to meet and do our best to, to do the standards of God, to, to please him because we reverence him in heaven. We want to put a smile on daddy's face in heaven. We, we got to make sure that we put our, our, our you know, protection of, up. Book of Ephesians talks about the armor of God, right? That really means something. That means be suited, be ready, be, be prayed up, be have your word ready, right? But, but the Holy Spirit, we, we are not up against one another in the flesh. And see, that's one of the things that's causing much immorality in the world right now is many of our leaders, even though they may even say that they're Christian, but they are leading contrary to the word of God. So... While, you know, somebody should be standing up and saying, you know what, I'm going to pray about this and uh, I'm not going to fight war and continue more war and, and more innocent death, right? But we see that that's not happening. Oh, you got, we act like the hood. Our leaders are acting like the hood. Came from the hood. I once thought like the hood. But the hood had to come out when the word got in me. It had to, thank you Holy Spirit, it had to draw that stuff out. It was sanctifying me. Not that I was perfect, but the word started to be the standard and not the hood. Not, not that gangster mentality. And yet we have leaders that have, you know, oh, I gotta get you back. And I'm gonna get you back harder. In the name of Jesus, right? And that's part of the stuff that's taken place that's abominable in the sight of God. And especially when that's influenced by the church, okay? This is a bad worship that does not bring peace. The word of God says, bless it, bless it. Enoch has the B attitudes too. I hope you get the book. Because these words were even spoken of way before Jesus spoke of the B attitudes. But blessed is the man, the woman who brings about peace to a community. When you're bringing desolation because you're going contrary to the word of God and you're using evil for evil and there's innocent bloodshed, this, this, this ain't bringing peace. It's bringing the thirst of more vengeance, more revenge. And wh where do you draw the line? Where, where should that stop, right? So we see this, right? But we should be focused, focused on Christ, focused on our families, focused on our loved ones, focused on the community. That it, while all hell is breaking loose around us, right? Isaiah 60, we shine that light. We a, be a positive influence. Amen. We had great hope this morning. I got, in my opinion, it's a miracle. Just to show somebody love without, like my sister said, not even force feeding, but just showing love 
And then before, you know, leaving the place that, that a person that may not have thought of themselves as a religious person or whatever, starting to say the word God. I mean, that's a start. That's a great starting place. Amen. And it encourages me. It should encourage you too that as your influence causes people to, to say something good about the creator of the heavens and the earth, it's encouraging Amen. I feel this glory right now. <laughs> Arturo, you remember. <laughs> but it's just, this is our opportunity now. And there's many opportunities out there that you keep coming. I think what Jesus said, you know, the, 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 the harvest is plentiful. The harvest is plentiful. There's so much opportunity out there. But the workers are few. Those are the words of Christ. The harvest. We, we have to see the potential in the community. It may look a certain way. God's saying, don't look at the outward appearance. Their heart can be changed. I might use you as a vehicle to change some of them hearts. But look at the opportunity. Look beyond their faults. Remember how I look beyond your fault? I mean, how many times that I have that? Yes, Lord. I better treat them good. Okay. <laughs> You've forgiven me so much that so I dare me even think about holding a grudge over here. Oh, I'm sorry the way that I act. Right? And, and, and then peace. And then the, the voice. And things are just better. Right? And the weight of this judgment that you had or, or, or this grudge that you were holding. Hello. <laughs> I'm, I'm guilty. But when, when you learn to just, I said this, even if it means that I have to go back to a brother or sister and apologize, I, I want that voice back. You know, I don't want that to taint my relationship with God. I, keep me focused. Lord, this standard, this standard that you have, you have you know, uh, uh, been embedding in my womb, in my heart, in my mind, I, I want to follow this standard. I, I want to shine for your glory. I want to rise up for your glory, oh God. You know? So even if I don't see another miracle today, and I say this a lot, I've seen so many. <laughs> you know, if I've never seen another one, but he wants us to think like, I bring life more abundantly, right? I want to give you life and life more abundantly. He wants us to expect his holiness, expect his miraculous, his signs, miracles, wonders. He, 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 he wants us to have that expectancy. Don't lose that. Amen? Amen. So, so it's time for us, you know, to really be encouraged in the midst of this great darkness that we do as Isaiah 60 says here, that we will together, together we, we arise. Doesn't matter what our circumstances are, our situation, we all got crap that we got to clean up, but he's helping us, right? But, but that we arise in the midst of that, in the midst of our circumstance, because in everything, he's always above our circumstance, always above. So turn with me uh, to the book of John. <clears throat> Book of John, chapter 14. Uh, we're going to read verses 5 through 14. When you get there, say amen. Book of John, chapter 14, starting at verse 5. And the word of the Lord reads, Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. 
from now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that we, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The, the words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. And see, Jesus was making a very important point, right? And even as many people, uh, you know, ministers, different denominations of Christianity have their own spin of, you know, this manifestation of unity. Monolistic God, only one God, one God. And we see how in the unity of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, how they are in total unification one to another is God. We have, we, we, we're saying the same thing, but we're just saying it differently, and yet we are doing what? We're quarreling about, oh, you, you're saying there's three gods. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that at all. One God. Jesus was the incarnate of the Father. God sent himself through the Son to the earth to lay his life down so that we would have a spiritual high priest. Right? And Jesus is saying, you need to be focused on me. Even another one, he said, y y y you believe in me because you see me right now, but blessed are those, us, in our time, blessed are those who believe in me and they don't even see me. You know, so it, it all has correlation, it all connects. Right? Jesus is saying, look, I am the way. I am that truth. I am the life, and he wants us to focus our attention on him. Amen. Focus on his teaching, you know? Focus these things even upon your family, right? A nice conversation and last night, and, and you know how wonderful it is that, that Jesus, you know, in the book of Revelation talks and speaks of quite plainly of a very diverse heaven one day, right? <laughs> a very diverse heaven, giving us understanding on the earth that it didn't matter what the government said about black people over here, you know, 200 years ago, and our native people over here, and our Mexicans over there. In the eyes of God, we're we mixed even if we're mixed or whatever, right? But we are all made in the image of God. You know, how dare anybody was able to say you're three-fifths of a human being? How did you get that? You're only a human being yourself, right? But this diversity, how we can have culture, how we can be who we are culturally. <laughs> Hello, somebody. <laughs> I get joy in this. But under the Lordship of God, of Christ, right? So we, we, he's not saying here, oh, you have to subscribe to this and then focus on me. No, 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 no. Even Apostle Paul says, how Jesus found you in that, and there was talking about circumcision, but, you know, if, if you found me tatted, from the head to toe, and I now think that, you know, my tattoos are a defilement to my body. He's saying, look, I found you in that, and now my love is covering all that. 
You know, because some people think, oh, I mean, I got to just go and get everything removed now that I'm... No, no, don't forget. Stay focused. Don't let all these things distract you, right? But stay focused. And that's, my, that's the end point of, of today's message, that as we walk in this seemingly immoral place, don't, don't be distracted. Stay focused. Stay focused on God. And be loving, be kind, not to judge outward appearance, right? Because if we start to do that again, like I used to do it, right? Then, 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 then I start to, my behavior starts to change and I start to, my relationship with God starts to break away and then I become immoral again. And I can't tell you, church, how many people I have had to watch in such short time like the word of God says in the Proverbs, as a dog returns to his vomit, so do we as people. We, we go back to our old ways. You know, when we get sanctified, when we get set apart and God shows us his love, we shouldn't be less compassionate to the world. But with every day that we walk with God, our compassion for humankind should increase, not decrease. Right? So that's a flawed thing happening and it's everywhere. But we shall not. If we're focused on God, if we stay focused on Him and we do our best to be reminded of Him and that every day we, we are just, like the Word of God says, pray without ceasing. This is our ability to even mentally think of Him in everything that it is. Let's include Him. Let's stay focused in Him. And then everything else is protected. And then what are we doing? We're doing our part to bring morality into an immoral society. And that there would be a chance for someone to feel that true love. Because think about how many people are grow growing up without parents or they're being, you know, uh, uh, going to a foster home. You know, how, how many things have happened in to, to get us to this point, I mean, should we not be compassionate about that? You know? And so, so that's what it does. When we stay focused on God and we allow ourselves not to be, you know, that judgment, judgmental person that I was in the past that's going to steer me away from being moral and, and treating people good in the earth, we stay focused on Christ and, and, and allow that focus to guide us because his Holy Spirit will be like, all right, Ashley, don't go right, go left, or vice versa. I'm telling you, this is the focus, right? Why? It's for our good. It's for our good. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, <clears throat> there was something else that came to my mind Holy Spirit, I ask you to bring it back, please. In the mighty name of Jesus, mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Once upon a time, once upon a time, there was something that used to hinder my wife. And when, even when we started dating, she shared with me that something always annoyed her mind, right? This is how the enemy works, right? I want us to, and, and I, I'm going to, you know, I, I'm just going to uh, allow myself to be vulnerable in this moment because I think that this is very important for us in this season. Because I know, I don't think, I know the enemy is doing the same thing. He's trying to attack your mind try to bring fear in your mind, try to question everything. And when you have the love of God and the authority that even comes by his name that we should use, we should use. There's a lot of things he gives us just by the name of Jesus, authority on this earth to combat darkness, wicked things, Manifesting in the invisible, but yet having a very profound impact on the influence of human beings on the earth, right? But uh, the enemy used to attack my wife's mind, 
you're going to die at the age of 46. And it, she would repeat it over and over, and it would drive me crazy. Of course, I didn't know how to pray back then. I didn't have the word of God, Sylvia, in me. I didn't, I didn't know how to deal with that other than show my frustration. Stop saying that. Maybe with a few other words, you know. And, but as we started to get into the word of God, she got sick and we're still fighting the good fight, you know. And there was a day that the Lord spoke to me and says, take charge, son, take charge. Get your wife right now and pray against that curse. That's how the Holy Spirit. See, I'm telling you, the compass, the compass, our Holy Spirit. Jesus says, I'm going to be with the Father and I'm going to send my Holy Spirit down to you to teach you and remind you, right? So that's what he is. He's, he's, he's our teacher. He's our guide, right? So he said, you take, you, 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 you take uh, authority over that curse, Right? And I got my wife, and I said, I am not putting up with this no more. She was dialyzing and everything. I said, this is going to be reversed. I don't know where it came from, who sent it. I don't care. But I heard clearly, take, take charge over that thing. And uh, just began to pray over her. The Holy Spirit came down, and we rebuked that. We rebuked that curse, wherever it was sent by, in the name of Jesus. When she turned uh, 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 46, that was um, the year, if I'm not mistaken, she got her kidney trim. That was last year. She was 46. She got a kidney transplant. So when the word of God says, I set up a table for you in the presence of your enemies. That's what he's talking about. And whoever sent that, yeah, it could have been another human being. I feel him all the time. I feel him even more since I've stuck ground foot on these native grounds five years ago. I know they come at me. But I'm just here to encourage you, don't let that distract you from walking out your faith with God morally to be that moral influence to your children. And Bertina, you have that authority that that curse tried to come, you feel that thing, reject it in the mighty name of Jesus. He even told me sometimes, return it to the sender. Right? We never want anything bad to happen to somebody, but if you want something bad for me, Lord, that's my shield of faith right there is the armor of God. Ding! Return in the name of Jesus. It ain't that, that, that evil thing is not welcome here, and I reject it in the name of Jesus. So Jesus says, use my name. I will hear from heaven, and I will do what you ask in my name. Amen. Amen. Let us stand to our feet as we pray out here today. Thank you, Jesus. Something smelling good, huh? <laughs> uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us by your Holy Spirit to always do our best to be reminded of you, of your standards, so that we can walk in this immoral society morally, to do our part to help influence more morality among our brothers and sisters throughout the world, regardless of their traditions, regardless of their uh, religion and faith, regardless whether they believe in you or not. Lord, you know my heart. Let us show everyone love and a chance that they will feel something invisible by your throne room of grace. We ask you, Lord, to just comfort us in this time we know there's a lot of different challenges out there, but when you are with us, you are faithful to see us through. We can walk through the shadow of the valley of death, but Lord, you are there to get us through. We will fear, we will fear no evil. For your rod, your staff, they comfort us. And here today, Lord, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for your Holy Spirit. 
May this word be an everlasting blessing for us henceforth. We pray this in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters online, this is your brother, Pastor Kevin Quarlchild Rodriguez, Living on the Rock Ministries, and until next time, we love you. God bless you. Please consider buying the book, Unforgivable Sin, Blaspheme Against the Holy Spirit, a Holy Spirit-inspired teaching. All proceeds for the next three years will go to the ministry's missions. Thank you and God bless you.